Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mojo Market Report right here on a football Monday. It is Dave Sturgio. It is Chris Gucci and, of course, A5 Anthony behind the glass here at Chop Studios. We got ourselves a loaded loaded week 14 a lot of movement in the market a lot of movement in the standings a lot of movement everywhere uh i survived personally a scare plenty of heart attacks to be had uh to potentially be the laughing stock of the league uh to lose to a texans team that was very 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 upsetting and disappointing and way unnecessary i turned the game off for one second i still don't know what happened and i guess i'll take this opportunity to ask the cowboys threw a pick deep in their own territory Correct? And yeah. then very end of the game, how'd they get the ball back without giving up points? Oh, the defense, baby. Defense, right. uh, the Texans decided to go for it on fourth from the two, uh, try to punch it in and end the game, and Demarcus Lawrence, whoop, just kind of okay. stuffed Burkhead. So the, because of the defense, Dak Prescott pulled up Baker Mayfield, and he went down the field 98 yards down the field, and the Cowboys won. So I'm a happy guy. You don't have to stress at all. You had the Packers on a bye. Everything that the Packers needed minus Detroit, uh, Everything else worked out. So the Packers are actually percentage points closer to the playoffs than they were yesterday. Here we are. Hey, it's here December. We are. Um, do you really want to put money against Aaron Rodgers in December? I, I won't. Uh, but it, where I will put my money uh, is on all the top movers from this past weekend. Um, I, like I said, a lot of cool things happened. Uh, some guys got new opportunities. Some guys got uh, old opportunities. We all saw it kind of develop. But the first guy we got to start with, Man, I you got to give it up for for the rain. And my wrestling fans will get this. Brock Purdy, like this guy, went out there and yeah, listen. Shout out to Kyle Shanahan for not dumbing it down. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when you have a, a second or now in, in this case a third quarterback, you dial down the playbook. You say like, ah, just you know, ease into it, buddy. Uh, but this dude went 16 for 21, a buck 85, two touchdowns, ran one in. Swag, bro. Yeah, swag. Yeah. He had it. I, I got to give it to Brock Purdy. I've been on Brock Purdy's uh, since last year at Iowa State. I've been a big Brock Purdy guy. But look, I don't know that they really had to dumb down the playbook. As far as I see it, the 49ers playbook, I'm sure it's a way more complex in terms of the intricacies of the line of scrimmage, things like that. But Brock Purdy's been there. you know. So that's why I think when we're talking about a Baker, we're talking about anybody else that they might have brought in, why would you change the continuity? They don't have to change too much because he's been there. And now I want to talk about what I think this means for the future of the position for the San Francisco 49ers. Purdy up 12%. And just so you know, and you know, putting it in perspective, let's just say you're like, hey, put a thousand dollars in the beginning of December on Purdy, it's now over three grand. So like yeah. this, he's made you some dough. So there was a report that came out last week that was saying that this was right before the Jimmy G injury, that the 49ers were interested and there was mutual interest in a in another year or two, another contract between Jimmy G and the 49ers. Being that Trey Lance is injured and we've seen what happened this year, Jimmy G just ends up the starting quarterback for the 49ers Mm -hmm. no matter what happens. I think what Brock Purdy is doing right now in these eight quarters that he's been able to play and show the world that he can play quarterback in this league is that you're not going to see Jimmy G in San Fran next year because Jimmy G is going to warrant a little bit bigger of a dollar amount and he's going to want to go somewhere to probably start if he can. I think Brock Purdy's proven at the very least that he's a solid backup quarterback in this league. I don't know that he unserves Trey Lance as the starter. Well, I have a a theory, not a theory, but a comparison. Now, this has happened to the 49ers before where a guy named Nick Mullins came in and lit the world on fire because people thought he was good. And now he's just been a journeyman backup. We could even do you one better. The rest of the way. Colin Kaepernick. And then Alex Smith, like, I mean, even Joe Montana and Steve, Steve Young. Young. No, like, this I, is this, this is a this, common theme. This for has the happened before, but I'm saying like Nick Mullins didn't sustain. Like he's a backup quarterback now. People are on Purdy as if like Trey, watch your back, bro. Like I don't, I no, don't know. I'm gonna if pump the brakes there. Yeah, Look, I don't but, think that's but a thing. Brock Purdy may have been a bigger recruit coming out of high school than than Trey Lance was. Trey Probably. Lance hasn't played against any competition as of yet in his career, and I'm not. I'm a big Trey Lance fan. I'm not sitting here and saying I don't think he could get it done. I don't think we all were. But going that injury, this that injury is a real serious injury, and we'll see how he responds. Yeah. So the 49ers make uh, make another impact Brock on the Brady, NFC though. West. Debo. That one. I mean, that's unfortunate. It's a high ankle sprain, which to me means a month. Yeah. If, playoffs. If, it, if it, so they'll be in the playoffs. And they can clinch the NFC West with a win on Thursday night football this week against the Seattle Seahawks. So um, the 49ers have put themselves in a position where they're going to be no worse 
than the third seed in the NFC right now, right? No worse than that because you can't see. I mean, <laughs> we can get into Tampa if we want. I don't see a move well, around basically, here. Tampa the, looks like the garbage. The whooping that the 49ers gave the Bucks yesterday, there's no way that That's, they're passing them in. Right. You know? So, like, right now, you're going to get a home game against the sixth seed. And with that sixth seed, it could be the Giants. It could be the Seahawks. It could be the Washington Commanders. So, it's up to them. They're going to – they have – they will be favored in a playoff game in January. And they'll be getting Debo back, you would assume. So, even if Debo were to sit out the rest of the regular season right now and be ready for January – I'm all for that if I'm Jerry there. Rice is not happy. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Oh my. I mean, listen, he's a goat. He can kind of say whatever he wants. I mean, you he don't wants. say much, but when he speaks, he, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe you should I saw listen. the headline. Jerry Rice. I'm like, Jerry Rice. I'm like, why, why is he like, saying anything? Stop running Debo up the middle. He's your <laughs> wide receiver one. Right. But shout out to Brandon Ayuk. Another great game out of him. So those guys got talent over there. And Christian McCaffrey. Like, if that dude stays healthy, this team. I said they can go to the Super Bowl when Ayuk, that was when Jimmy got, G was. You got to be in on Ayuk right now. No? Absolutely, 100%. absolutely. So those guys ran up the score yesterday. Poor Tom Brady throwing another Microsoft Surface. Uh, we we talked about the fact that like, ooh, will Tom Brady come back next year? I think he would, um, and I think he would want to be right here in the Bay Area. So it's like, hey, Brock, that was awesome, dude. I'll see you next year when you're backing me up. <laughs> so we'll see. Ooh. Yeah, imagine first, that. First quarterback in NFL history to beat Tom Brady in his first NFL start. Brock Purdy. And shout out to Brock Purdy's family. Like that's such the that's the cool stuff. How about, about this? Football. They weren't even they they weren't traveling to the game because he was starting. They had bought the tickets. Months in advance because they want to see Brady because it was Tom Brady, <laughs> and they that? get to watch their son beat Tom Brady. No, well, that's, that's can't write that's, it any. You better. Cannot write that any better. All right, moving on to the surging Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, these guys are putting Oof. up points. Um, the mover here is Evan Ingram. Okay, Evan Ingram's the mover um, of the day right here. Nine point three percent. The dude went eleven. <laughs> Try facing him in fantasy on your final week. I did. I did. In, in, yeah, that was fun. Unbelievable. Uh, 11 catches, 162 yards, two touchdowns, has a career day. You could talk about him. You could talk about Trevor, 30 for 42, 368, three touchdowns, and a little bit of swag and attitude at the end of this one. Like, all of a sudden, Trevor Lawrence is like, I, what do the kids say? I'm him, right? Like, that's what... That's what it seems like all of a sudden. Just perfect timing as they play Dallas next week. So that's fun. Uh, but overall, the Jaguars putting up points. I don't know what the heck happened to the Titans this year. Their defense just doesn't look as Can't good. Can't play Green Bay every week. Let, right. <laughs> Can't be led. Vrabel, again, I like him as a coach. But all of a sudden, the defense was non-existent against a Jaguars team that you're just like, you're in on them to, for like future, but like right now they're 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 stomping some teams out when they're when they're putting up points. Yeah, so so we'll talk about this in two parts. Well, really three parts. I got to get tip your hat to Doug Peterson. This guy I think has really turned this team around. Um, there was a guy on the Charger. Or, Who's the linebacker for the Jaguars that said he was like, well, Trevor Lawrence didn't have a rookie season because he had to deal with Urban Meyer last year. So it's there's like, a whoa. linebacker that said that a linebacker was it Miles Jack on or the Jaguars. Like that? No, he's Did he the, get traded the, the, um, in any event. Know. But yeah, there sure. was a, a player on the defense that came out and supported Pretty Trevor Lawrence. But look, ready? Trevor Lawrence, he has two games over 300 yards and three touchdowns in his last three. Two of his last three. He's now won his second road game in his career. So things are starting to stack up in terms of good things. And and Trevor Lawrence, look, the acumen's been there. We thought he was the number one quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning. He didn't necessarily live up to it early, but this is what we've been saying. It takes a little bit of time sometimes. Urban Meyer did suck. Trevor Lawrence, you mentioned the attitude at the end of the game, and now guess what? Not only does he have a weapon in Christian Kirk, not does he have a, a, a solid playmaking explosive back in Travis Etienne, now he's got a tight end target uh, that he could rely on. Guy couldn't catch a ball for the Giants. Like, what is going hey, on hey, here? But you got to give him nodding his head. Like, you yeah, got to give credit where it's due. Evan Ingram right now is a top five tight end in the league, and that's not. That's not like an opinion. That's this is like statistically speaking, Trevor um, Evan Engram is up there with the best of them uh, outside of Travis Kelsey. Really, you yeah. know, look at it. It's like any given week he could take over as the number two tight end. Um, you got to tip your hat if you had if you have if you have Engram in your portfolio and he has this game and you have him at not, you know the nine point three that you see here. If you have his ten time multiply, you doubled your money in one day with Evan Ingram. That's that's again the, the crazy also, part if you about had Evan Ingram in your portfolio. I want to shake your hand. Yeah, seriously, because right. I, I didn't. But really, <laughs> then I look at his season. He started off fairly consistent, then he had like a a, a small blip where he wasn't playing well, and really that was the, just the Jaguars as a whole weren't playing well. But now in the last two weeks, he's really he's really came on. Like so. I said, right on time. Cowboys coming in. This this yeah. should be fun. A lot of fun next week. And by fun, I mean I just I'm not prepared. Um, let's go to somebody that kind of fell off the face of the earth yesterday. And if you have the multipliers on them like I do, 
Tua lost you some dough yesterday. Tua was not himself, and this is not the first time we've seen this in recent weeks. Tua not looking good at all. 10 of 28 for 145 yards, and 60 of those yards came on a bomb the hill. So you had like under 100 yards basically the entire way. Looking like Baker. Yeah, <laughs> One touchdown, he's down 3%, but like I said, I got all the multipliers possible on this guy. So I, I lost some coin yesterday. Uh, he ran three times for 28 yards. Are you at all concerned about Tua and this Dolphins offense all of a sudden because they're high octane? The the two trips on the West Coast, they stayed out there. They they trap, you know, they I think they practiced at UCLA or something all week. So the Dolphins stay out there and get beat up twice in a, in California. Now it's it's time to either get right or do you think this kind of wheels fall off uh, fall off situation? I don't know who they play going forward, but I, I think that this is a very good football team. Mm -hmm. And look, we say Tua hasn't played well in two straight weeks. Well, the first game, the first week, you have to give somewhat of a pass. It was the 49ers defense. Like, nobody's playing well against them. And you want to see your your star players, as we would like to consider Tua a star player, you'd like to see them step up and play well no matter who the defense is. But truth of the matter is, the 49ers are just lighting it up on defense right now. And then last week, that was his first dud game. But I'm going to equate this to, you know, an anomaly kind of thing where the Chargers came out and played their best football. Mm. And when that happens, it's sometimes hard in the NFL. Like they lit them up from start to finish. Even the only reason why the game was close was because of a fumble that Tyreek Hill took to the house. And it wasn't even really a close game. Like they beat them up through and through. Yeah. But that's why the score looked close halfway through the game. It wasn't because anything the Dolphins did. So I'm going to throw it away. I still think two is a buy. I think Jalen Waddle might be a little more injured than people thought. So he's really kind of ineffective. And um, you see what happens when they have nobody else. Jeff Wilson got hurt, so their run game took a major hit. Just uh, to give you a heads up as to how the Dolphins finished their year schedule-wise, and if you're a Tua uh, investor, um, next week, Saturday night at Buffalo. Mm. Yikes. Uh, the following week, on Christmas Day, the Packers. <laughs> so, um, And then they, they finish at New England and home against the Jets. So... They don't have a great schedule. They don't have an easy schedule. At and all. really, if I'm looking at it, Buffalo, Green Bay, and the Jets all have fairly decent pass defenses. The Patriots, too. Oh, mean. yeah, and the Patriots. Yeah, so, so yeah, this is like all of a sudden you're like, do you I know, short Tua? I know. I'm not going to short Tua. Okay. I'm not going to short Tua because I've been screaming it from the rafters that Tua is the biggest buy I, in the mojo market. And, and, and I his stand value by now, that. if you want to do it now, he's even yeah, lower now. I stand now. by that still because I look at the weapons that they have, and there's going to be points, even if it's not this season, there's going to be points next season. He's going to be locked in unless somehow or another they just say, you know what, he's not the guy, which I can't imagine that being no, the case. McDaniel loves after him. how well he's been playing for the first, you know, two months of this season, three yeah. months of this season. No way. A team that clinched a playoff berth. It's his first dud game of the year, by the way. It, uh, Last week wasn't a dud. It wasn't a complete dud. He had two picks, and they were in bad spots. But overall, like his his numbers, his counting stats weren't. You know what's funny? Garbage. It's funny you mentioned that because I'm sitting there like Dak threw another two interceptions yesterday. And I'm just like, how's this guy? You know, like ah, oh, yeah. And I'm up in arms. But then I'm like looking at Tua, and I'm looking at Mahomes threw two interceptions yesterday. They win games. You know what I mean? Like as long as you're winning games, let's not go crazy about the stat sheet. Um, like I usually do. I'm like, I can't believe it. You know? And then just like pump the brakes. Unless it works win the for games. unless it works for you. Unless it makes you feel good, then go crazy. Yeah, right? I guess. Dak throws zero picks. You be like, look at Dak. <laughs> zero picks. Look at those stats. <laughs> exactly. It's like the power rankings. Power rankings are so dumb until the Cowboys until, are ranked yeah. one. So you, and I'm like, you like Yo, power teammate. rankings are legit, dude. That's something I would. Definitely focus in on. Um, all right, moving on to a team that clinched a playoff berth this week. Anthony's not going to like this segment at all. As the Philadelphia Eagles stomp out the New York Giants yesterday, just bad news all around. Uh, the Giants can't get, I mean, they're a bad football team right now. And the Eagles took full advantage of that. Uh, Hurts had himself a day, but overall, the big mover here is Miles Sanders. He's up big time, 6.94%. This high-octane offense is something to watch going forward, and now you have a playoff bye. I know, did Miles Sanders pop up on your short list? He, he did. He, he did, unfortunately. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, then, yes, well, you, you lost just, money there. Look, Thursday's but, episode, just pretend like that never happened. There you go. Right? Uh, 17 carries, 144 yards, two touchdowns for Miles Sanders. Um, you know, you add a running game on top of so a mad at myself running quarterback. Fucking... Yeah, um, running quarterback that I, I just, again, the offense in itself is great. Devonta Smith is is caught one ball in between two guys. And I'm just like, dude, like, 
what don't they do right? Is it stinks <laughs> again as a Cowboy fan or if you're a Giants fan or if there is any Washington Commanders fan, you got this guy now for the rest of, of time, and and you're gonna have to deal with this this offense going forward. And they win another game, and they just seem unbeatable. I don't yeah, know. and five touchdowns in his last three, eight touchdowns in his last eight. Not really much to offer in, in the way of receiving, but I don't know if it matters. Does it because, matter? Right? Does it matter? You know, there's been two games out of the last three where he's eclipsed 140 yards rushing. I don't care if you get zero catches. If you're if you're Derrick Henrying everybody at 140 yards a game, right? You don't have to catch any passes, and the touchdowns are there. I mean, I don't know what I was looking at Thursday. <laughs> honestly, so I think what that was was just a panic. No, you know, you know what it was though. Sometimes, and we've done this already. We've we've gone through the market. I, I, nobody watches that market more than me and you, and we're trying to figure out like why is he down. You know what I mean? So, like, there's there's certain aspects that are like, all right, maybe it's a buy-low situation, or why isn't, like, for the year, why is he dead? Miles Sanders having himself a year. Every single Eagle who plays on offense right now, you can even credit the linemen if they were, a, a, you know, a, you know, interested in, in investing in linemen. I'd invest in the entire offensive line of the Eagles, you know? Like, the Eagles are playing great, and shout-out to them. It sucks. <laughs> the whole thing stinks. J.K. Dobbins rounds out our top movers for the weekend. Um off the IR, fresh off the IR, 15 carries, 120 yards, a touchdown. Huntley gets a win. He's up, and so now all of a sudden, he's up another 5.8%. Um, I've always been a Dobbins guy. It's just been a health thing that kind of like always kind of holds me back from really going all in on Dobbins. But now now that the Ravens are kind of fully entrenched in a playoff spot, I know they're going to be battling with, with Cincinnati the rest of the way for four weeks, but you would assume that they're going to get in the playoffs. So now all of a sudden, does Dobbins become one of your buys for the for the run here in the deep playoff run yes and no i mean i like jk dobbins too he's been a guy that i've been invested in in, in dynasty league since he came in i drafted him with my first pick right so i like jk dobbins but the thing is i've had nothing but bad experiences so far with jk dobbins right. in his rookie year highly efficient a lot of touchdowns not much work though right so you're like okay there's some there's some positivity going into year two and then we all know what happened in year two he was just non-existent he got injured this but year, before that, he was busting off like eight yards a clip. Fair, right? <laughs> and then this year, he had a really decent game against Buffalo in terms of he had a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. The yardage total wasn't there. And then now he gets a game without Lamar. And you see what happens to the running game without Lamar. I know that they're a better team running the football when Lamar's in the game because he brings a lot to the table there. But as far as running backs go... I just don't see it out of the Baltimore Ravens. When you have a quarterback that runs the way Lamar does much like Buffalo Bills, like no running back is able to take the lead and, and say like, okay, we're going to be the leading rusher. They're not mm -hmm. because they have the quarterbacks there. Very, It's an anomaly seeing what Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts have been able to do this year where they're both able to rush the ball and both have uh, high touchdown totals. You're not going to see that too often. You're certainly not going to see that out of the Ravens. Um, so I'm not going to go long on Dobbins. I'm actually going to go short on Dobbins if I, was to, if I was to get in on him because two things. One, what I just mentioned about the quarterbacks, Lamar will come back. J.K. Dobbins will have to be hand getting the ball from Lamar, and I think that the rushing totals go down significantly when Lamar is at quarterback. And two, you talked about the injuries. They exist. He's right. always hurt. So w really, I don't want to hold my breath and wait on the fact that J.K. Dobbins is injured again. Oh, J.K. Dobbins left game questionable to return. I've seen that all too many times. I'm good. I'm going to short <laughs> Dobbins, if anything. All right. Those are your top movers from week 14. And guess what? We got one more to go. It's not very appealing, I would say. Both seasons are kind of lost. Uh, I guess if there's any shred of hope that the Patriots make a late, late night or late run here, now would be the time, but I just don't see it. It is the New England Patriots hosting the, I'm sorry, the Arizona Cardinals hosting New England Patriots. A lot of plays, though, to be made here tonight. Um, again, I think I'm not inaccurate when I say this. Is Kyler Murray like one of the quarterbacks that we've just not talked about on this show? Like I, I, I think about that all the time. I'm like, we're always talking upper, 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 and then we're talking about the, you know, the the we've, guys that just got probably opportunities. We've not talked about him as often as maybe we should have, but we've definitely brought him up. Yeah, I mean, Hopkins, the Hopkins time, the Hopkins stuff is great, and that's a guy that again, that's one of those safe plays. He's going to get his eight to ten catches a game. You know, he'll probably find some pay dirt. You know, but overall, it's like I'm looking at uh, a team that if. This is this is a pivotal four games for the Cardinals. Now, I know their season's lost and they're not going to make the playoffs or anything like that, but the front office is going to have some decisions to make in the offseason. Now, I know the decision, the ultimate decision, was that they already paid the guy, right? 
And they probably can't eat that salary. No. Probably not. No. More than likely not. No. Not going to do it. It's not possible. But, like, at what point do you, uh, when are you out on a, you, you gave him the money and he's just, ah, he's two, just not, three, a lot to be left for desire, man. Three it's, years minimum they got with Kyler now. Good Lord. And so that means they're probably going to get rid they of this coach. They guaranteed him a, lot of, a, a ton of all the coaches. Kingsbury's back in college next year. I would say Kingsbury's fired after the season's over. Um, Kyler's not going anywhere for any time soon, unless they could get somebody that's willing to give up a decent amount for him, which they might be able to do that, but I don't know, man. Also, if you if you start shopping your quarterback, things tend to get a lot worse, and I don't know that they're going to be able to get the haul that they think they could get for him. So that's not even a conversation, honestly. I think yeah, that's just I, maybe... I, again, maybe I'm just like, I'm not a frustrated if, if investor. The I'm not Cardinals in Cardinals front Kyler. office was asked about the, like that question particularly right now, they would shoot it down immediately. They would have to because you know understanding the contract, the team isn't going to be like, oh, you guys don't buy in on the quarterback that you just paid all that money to? Why would we? How do you think he fares tonight with, with the New England Patriots? Not great. Honestly, the pa- Patriots' pass defense just is really difficult for people to deal with. This is a tough game. I feel like Mac Jones is the more of a passer that I'd be interested in this one. If there's a game oh, that he could have a passing success... <laughs> At all this season is this one. So I'm looking at Mac Jones. Because, I'm in on my guy, Ram, uh, Ramondre. Well, that's a given. I'm already yeah. in. I've, that's, a, that's happened a long time ago. And yeah. I'm not going anywhere on Ramondre Stevenson. Maybe next season when the Patriots fix things and they're a playoff team again, which I do kind of believe they will be. It's um, a hard division to just get out of the basement of all of a sudden because those other teams are yeah, I mean, playing really yeah, well. Yeah, we were talking about the basement, and now look at the Jets. They're out of it, right? Kind of. They could be back in very fast. Yeah, it's still Zach true. Wilson and Mike White. They got to figure that out. Until then, I don't Don't wanna, you think I'm the Patriots have to it. figure this out, too? Between him and Bailey Zappi all of a sudden? I do. I do think so. But I think that Mac Jones has played way better up to this point in his career than Zach Wilson has. The Patriots have a better quarterback than the Jets do right now. I think that's a no debate. Okay. Not, not for me, at least. Jets and, fans will probably go, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if the Jets fans have a, a, a word to say, Mike White, love the guy, right? <laughs> Tough, you, you name it, what he brings to the table is all. But he's not the quarterback of the future, and I think Jets fans know that, right? Maybe they don't have the quarterback of their future on their roster, which is very alarming considering all the other pieces they do have. Mm. Jimmy G. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. All right. Interesting. Tell me that don't fit. It does fit. It does fit very well. Right? Fits yeah. really well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so Ramondre Stevenson, Mac Jones. Am I in on Nuck Thompson tonight? I mean, Nuck Hopkins tonight? Probably not. Nucky Thompson. That's Boardwalk Empire for those that don't know. <laughs> Hilarious miss up, by the way. <laughs> mess up. Um, but yeah, Hopkins, I think he still has a lot to prove because he didn't get to play this full season. So he's still, you know, week four guy. You know, right. he's, he's like, all right, I'm going to do my numbers at least and salvage my stats. And I know that maybe people don't care about stats, but trust me, wide receivers definitely care Hollywood about Hollywood Brown stats. back in the fold as of last Hollywood week, Brown so he's back, back in, the fold. in there. Yeah, but still, I just think it's going to be Hopkins, if anybody. Is it Rondell Moore season? <laughs> I've been trying to like is really he hurt. Put, I, I think he's out. I, I think Rondell Moore's then out. Then it might even be better beneficial to for <laughs> Rondell Moore to not even play, uh, to not. It's not, still it's somehow or another game. Rondell Moore season, even if he's not. It's playing. always Rondell Moore right. season here. Uh, but anyway, so that's. But Mac Jones is my guy that I think has the potential to shoot up a little bit tonight. Yeah. So look, not like I said, not the most. Stevens will have 13 catches. Not the most appealing. Right out of the backfield. Not the most appealing game in the world, but this is how we're going to put a bow on week 14 Cardinals Patriots tonight. So again, crazy, crazy weekend in the NFL. A lot, a lot of, a lot of things to look forward to the, you know, the Brock Purdy show moves on. He gets prime time this week with the Seahawks. We'll talk about that obviously on Thursday. Um, there's uh, the storylines are plenty like, uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys are still down two two and a half games. If you think about it, but can the Eagles trip up against Justin Fields and the bears? Probably not. So all signs point to the Eagles just yeah. kind of cruising. I hate the Vikings losing again, man. Like that, that's a big one. The, the lions play scrappy football. A lot of us picked that game on Friday to be the lions to just keep on going. Um, and the Vikings are looking a little fraudulent. So, I mean, I, there's a lot. Going on within the last four weeks of be football, tough to beat Philly. It it is going to be tough to beat Philly. I think they're a high octane offense, uh, and their defense and is playing very well. Right, um, but again, they they beat the Cowboys with um, Cooper Rush at the helm. So we'll see if Dak Prescott can lead them. I don't want to get there before you know. I'm not about to at all look over, look past Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. They're um, they're playing very so well. So when do you guys play? It's Christmas Eve, of course. I mean, why not just make the holidays? So I mean, stink? there's there's a chance that. That game doesn't mean all that much. Well, here's the thing. So if the if the Eagles 
win this week against the Bears and the Cowboys do what they should do and beat the Jaguars, going into that Christmas Eve matchup, this, the 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 gap is still the same. And even for the Cowboys to With win one that less game. game though. Right. So even if the Cowboys are to win that game, um, they're still like a game and a half out with like two to play. So they would have to trip up somewhere along the line, the Eagles. So you and, just and lose this week so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I just want to know if they could beat them or not. That's all. I, I just That's good. I'm curious. So in any event, do yeah. us a favor right now. If you want, you should probably head on over to all of our social media accounts. You can follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok at Mojo M O J O. That's the way to do it. And of course, Join the Discord. There's a conversation to be had each and every day, live during the games. You can get on Twitter, interact with a whole bunch of guys that are on Twitter as well. Head on over to mojo.com because the Mojo Market Report is not only here as a show, but there is a report to be read. They update that every day with a couple plays uh, that you might be interested in and future stuff too. So that'll do it. Uh, I, again, this is just what? you got Think about else? how cool it would be if you had Zion in your portfolio for that windmill dunk at the, the end of the game against oh, the Suns. Man, I t- between him and um, Lakers. Um, Anthony Davis. Him too. Between those guys, it's like all of a sudden the NBA has a couple of their stars back, and that's cool. You know, if you're an NBA guy, that's and great. And LeBron dropped 35 in year 20. Woo! I mean, year 20. Think about that. He is the Tom Brady of the NBA, and he doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon. So soon, coming soon, the mojo is, in fact, the NBA. And, of course, baseball is on the horizon. All that money spent, can you imagine what the mojo's market report would do when the all these contracts are to be given out? Like, that's just... Yeah. It's going to be madness. Are the Yankees, 2023. Yankees going to get Carlos Correa? I sure. I mean, do you really want to spend the money I there? personally don't really want Carlos Correa. I don't Correa. care for the guy. I'd, I'd I mean, rather bring in a left fielder and Rodon. But if we're going to get Rodon and Correa, I'll uh, take it. Geez. Can't Glaber just would, learn how to catch a fly ball? Yeah, I mean, whatever the case. But in any event, 2023 is going to be absolutely bonkers for the Mojo Market Report. Adding sports, adding states. It's going to be fun. But let's get through week 14 tonight. Monday Night Football for Dave Sturgio, Chris Gucci, A5, Behind the Glass. This has been another episode of the Mojo Market Report. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Brr.